One of my biggest pet peeves is people reading stuff on the web about one compound or the other that kind of falls into our general wheelhouse of knowledge relating to TRT, biohacking, nootropics, and research chemicals, and then repeating that thing that someone said on Reddit about that chemical without validating whether or not that thing is true. Thankfully, there are people like me <laughs> that have to look into some of these things to really prove if they're true or not true because it's relevant to a client that we might be working with. Cabergoline is a dopamine D2 receptor agonist that a lot of people on TRT, especially the folks that are on anabolic androgenic steroids in the R steroids subreddits, you know, and many other people around the world know about as being able to lower prolactin. I mean, that, that that's really what that drug is for. It, it's very effective at doing so. And the misconception of the thing that gets repeated regarding cabergoline is that it gives you cardiac valvulopathy, like uh, chamber issues and valve uh, problems in your heart from dosage of it. So people just think like, okay, like, you know, if, if I'm on a DECA cycle and my prolactin's fucking 30 or 40 nanograms per milliliter, I, I can't take cabergoline because I really don't want it to run, run into heart problems. You got people commenting regarding cabergoline, oh, that shit's dangerous. So, you know, like if you talk to fucking butt crack monster 72 on Reddit and, and ask him where he figured that out, like you really drill him. If you sat butt crack monster down in real life and you said like, can you validate this? Where did you hear it? You know what you're ultimately going to find out? He fucking read it on Reddit. Hey, what up, say? One time for the hometown, I got love for it, that's real. Yeah. Two times for the haters, man, cause I notice how this shit feel. Three times for my family, dog, cause this shit I'm Meantime, paid, specials on product this week, 20% off the most comprehensive breakdown of hacking dopamine. It's a course that I built called Supercharged Dopamine. Code for that is 20 now. Cortex stack, performance nootropic, stimulant energy right away, lasts a good degree of the day. 25% uh, off code for that is 25 Cortex. Lastly, torque stack, all day energy, usually six to eight hours of dopamine style motivation and brain energy, 35% uh, off code for that is 35 torque. And lastly, I'm a consultant on TRT, nootropics, energy optimization, sexual dysfunction, ED, host of other things. You can hire me in under a minute at livecortex.com. Okay, this is a classic example of this. So this is a thread on the testosterone subreddit where a guy titles it, worried about taking cabergoline. He goes, my endo recently prescribed me cabergoline for high prolactin. Good job, endocrinologist, because that's what you would prescribe for that. You know, P5P and vitamin E uh, may not be effective for people that's prolactin is super elevated and also depends on the cause. I recently learned, by the way, that 9-MABC is pretty effective for lowering prolactin, but in these cases where it's excessively high, it may not be. Guy goes, my prolactin has been high for a year now and most of my recent bloods were 22 nanograms per milliliter. Okay, that's not terrible. That's probably not a pituitary tumor, so that guy's in okay shape. He just needs to get it down to 10 to 14 nanograms per milliliter and he'll be fine. Guy goes, I'm a little worried about taking this drug. When he prescribed it to me, he said it was a very safe thing to, to take. But after reading things about it, it seems like it could cause me heart problems and maybe negatively affect my erections. He prescribed it for me for five months. Okay, so here's an endocrinologist that actually was right in saying that in this particular context, it is safe to take. That's probably because this endocrinologist understands the cardiac valve issues that come about with cabergoline are only at a cumulative dose of 300 milligrams plus, which you wouldn't even get close to if you're lowering your prolactin from 22 to 15 or something. But this guy, you know, read people who didn't validate whether this was true or not, perpetuating the idea that cabergoline is like cardiotoxic or something. This is like completely fucking preposterous idea and a gross misinterpretation of what the scientific literature said. And this guy's scared to take a medication that his endo wants to prescribe him to lower prolactin. And this right here on a different thread is actually like my case in point. This is just a thread title. How, have you ever used cabergoline to re reduce refractory period? Because yeah, lowering prolactin is gonna make it so that, you know, after you climax, you can be ready for sex sooner. Like the, the, the whole reason after you climax as a man that you get essentially ED and <laughs> you're not interested in sex is because of the 10 to 15 nanograms per milliliter surge of prolactin, right? I mean, that's kind of a feedback system that is in place for a reason. Otherwise you'd be fucking like a jackrabbit consistently. And then you, you know, you tie yourself out. You just empty out all your sperm. <laughs> Guy in the comments, here's the case in point boys. Guy goes, man, Kaber, which by the way, just you, just say the whole name. This isn't a street drug guys. It's not Oxy. Oxy. Guy goes, uh, man, Kaber is really bad for you. Imagine being in the hospital with a fucked up heart and the name of being able to come more. See, this is the stupid shit. Excuse my French and excuse me kind of stepping out of my typical professionalism. This is stupid shit, guys. And then OP goes, yeah, that's useful to know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
Let's go to what's true and what isn't true, shall we? Because there are studies on this, right? This is a paper that's tied. Well, what? Wow. Okay. Like, <laughs> I just uncontrollably scrolled down. I didn't. I didn't mean to do that, guys. This is a paper titled "Long-Term Cardiac Valvulopathy: Safety of Cabergoline in Prolactinoma." Now, prolactinomas are uh, pituitary adenomas, tumors, effectively that uh, overexpress lactotropes and secrete way more prolactin than you know you should be secreting. And the aim of this study was to determine the prevalence, right? So you know the how common it is to have valvular heart abnormalities and people taking cabergoline for the treatment of prolactinomas. Well, they they uh, they tested in this case, let's see, 61 females, 39 males. They were all people with prolactinomas. Some had macros, some had micros. In that they had one case of mitral regurgitation in a person with a cumulative dose of cabergoline of 104 milligrams. Now that's very rare. And, but by the way, 104 milligrams Grams. That takes a very long time of steady state, consistent use of cabergoline with no breaks to reach that cumulative dose. However, they say aortic and pulmonary valve functioning was normal in all of these cases. They go, there were no significant cases of valvular regurgitation. None of the patients had morphological abnormalities such as thickening, calcification, and restricted mobility of any of the cardiac valves. But we know that this does happen. There are cardiac valvulopathy or cardiac valve problems associated with cabergoline. And what the research shows us is that this happens in excessively high doses taken consistently with a cumulative dose, okay? A cumulative dose of 300 milligrams, all right? So in order to reach these cardiac problems associated with cabergoline, you would need to dose upwards of 300 milligrams. Do you know how long that would take to, and, and at what dose to reach three, a cumulative dose of 300 milligrams of cabergoline? Simple calculation of what the average dose for someone with a prolactinoma is, which is 0 0.5 to one milligrams a week, split up into, you know, basically every three and a half days, twice a week is, is typically how cabergoline is dosed because it has a very long half-life and it agonizes the D2 receptors for a very long time. But let's just be generous and say it's one milligram. Well. For 52 weeks, that's an entire year of one milligram, you're only at 52 milligrams of cabergoline. You're not even close to 300. In order to get to 300, let's do 104. This is two years, 104 weeks, two years. It's only 104 milligrams. In order to reach 300 uh, milligrams, cumulative dose where the cardiac valvulopathy issues tend to happen or can happen, which by the way, usually only happens in Parkinson's patients that are dosing cabergoline for a very, very long time at high doses, You'd have to be dosing a milligram a week for 300 weeks. 300 weeks is 5.7 years, okay? 5.7 years. So let's just walk it back for a second. If a guy has 22 nanograms per milliliter at prolactin, which is slightly elevated, I do agree that it, it, it should go down and maybe should try P5P, maybe some 9 mbc possibly some Makuna purines. Shisandra has been shown to lower prolactin pretty effectively. It actually worked for me. But if all, all else fails, like if this guy gets on 0 0.5 milligrams uh, cabergoline a week, no question within two weeks, probably less. But, you know, the doc would probably want to have him on it longer, which is a, a good idea, at least a month, maybe two months. This guy's prolactin would go down to between four and 10 nanograms per milliliter. That's my guesstimate based on seeing this over and over again. I have a lot of experience with that drug. That would happen in a month, a month. And here's a guy that's got elevated prolactin for whatever reason, maybe he was taking Kratom and, and the elevated prolactin was shutting down his gonadotropins. And so he wasn't synthesizing a lot of testosterone. And over time that leads to not just sexual dysfunction, but fucking uh, metabolic disorder, cardiovascular disease, like these are bigger problems, you know, to have. This guy, like, you know, that case of the guy on Reddit would never come, never ever in a million years. Okay, take 5.7 years, get close to this cumulative dose of 300 milligrams, which is where the cardiac valve issues really come about. 5.7 years, the guy's prolactin would be normalized in less than a month, okay? Less than a month with a, with a dose of, with a cumulative dose of four milligrams. Four milligrams, okay? Four milligrams is what it would take. People that have uh, like DECA-induced uh, hyperprolactinemia, uh, kratom-induced hyperprolactinemia, maybe uh, uh, elevated estradiol-induced hyperprolactinemia, because even though that's rarer, it certainly can happen. Estradiol can increase uh, prolactin via 
binding directly to the lactotropes. There's ERB or ERA receptors on the lactotropes. They also uh, fuss with the D2 receptors on the lactotropes. But like for any of these people, none of them, literally none, like irrefutably none, definitely none, non-opinionated none, are going to take, are going to require anywhere close to 300 milligrams of carbergaline to lower their prolactin. I mean, you could be at 70 nanograms per milliliter prolactin. Yeah, you take a milligram a week, split up into two different doses every three and a half days. You might have to take, if it's sitting at 70, you might have to take that for four months, five months, maybe even six months. You'll reach nowhere near 300 milligrams, which is the defined cumulative dose where you end up having problems. So much so that the screening for valvulopathy should be restricted, restricted to those with higher cumulative cabergoline exposure. So don't, they won't even give you a 2D echo or otherwise a cardiac imaging screening unless you've had a very excessive cumulative dose of cabergoline, which is only seen, by the way, in macroprolactinomas, you know, and, and in three to five years of usage of very high doses of cabergoline, or in patients that have Parkinson's disease that are using basically cabergoline for dopamine replacement. Stop listening to fucking Buttcrack Monster 78 on Reddit because he does not have your interest at heart at all. He misinterpreted the scientific literature. Actually, he didn't even read it, dude. He just repeated what, what Helpful Friendship 46 said on Reddit, <laughs> okay? And just to put this in perspective, cabergoline is not an unsafe drug when taken in appropriate doses for most of the reasons that people would need to take it. So don't believe everything you read on Reddit, man. There's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of people taking things out of context is there's more often than not people misinterpreting scientific literature and then for the purposes of wanting to get upvotes like you don't even know these people's intentions <laughs> they go and post fear-mongering about it on the web you, you got to learn to validate whether it's true or not and if you don't feel like going into the scientific literature don't repeat it all right you know come to a channel like this or, or, or research maybe an endocrinologist talking about it but importantly don't be one of those guys that's repeating stuff that you can't validate okay it's not helpful to anyone as i said in the beginning 20 percent off the most comprehensive course on hacking dopamine. My 15 years experience went in this. The code for that is 20 now. Supercharged dopamine is the most comprehensive course you'll ever get on hacking dopamine. I mean, it's the holy grail. Torque stack. Look, if you want a nootropic that like you're going to not want to run out of, <laughs> that will give you instant brain energy and last a good degree of the day and make you motivated just by torque, 35% uh, off. So I'll even give you a discount. Code for that is 35 torque. Cortex stack right now, 25% off. High level focus, clean stimulant flow, mental energy, verbal fluency, mental processing speed. Onsets very quickly, boys. 25% off. Code for that is 25 cortex. And lastly, yes, this is busy season for me, man. So I'm getting booking after booking after booking. So if you need to get in with me, especially on the larger one-on-one -on -one packages where we do some major damage and optimize every facet of your physiology, ranging from hormones to sexual function to neurotransmitters, book with me at livecortex.com. Email me, Ryan, at livecortex.com if you want to talk about which package makes sense for you. Please go watch the hour and 30 minute long podcast with me and Vigorous Steve, where we break down our experience, our client's experience, our thoughts, the scientific research on TRT, 9-MEBC, nootropics, DHT derivatives, human chorionic gonadotropin, HRT, all the different derivatives of HRT. So much useful content. I will link that podcast down in the description of this video. It is epic, so sit back, Put your seatbelts on, strap in, get a meal, get a beer, and have at it because we break everything down, boys. Otherwise, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you're having a great week. Kick ass, rock on, and I'll talk to you in the next one.